If there's one magazine that really shapes the fashion world, it's definitely Vogue. For over a hundred years, it's been leading the way in design, photography, and art. For more than a century, Vogue has published features on the greatest fashion designers, such as Chanel, Prada, Christian Dior, Gucci, Valentino, or Dolce & Gabbana, along with up-and-coming talents. They work with the best models and top-notch photographers. Even big-name artists like Joan Miro, Andy Warhol, or Salvador Dali have pitched in by designing covers. These covers make up a stunning collection that shows how art has changed from the 1900s till today. Today, Vogue has 23 international editions, reaching over 20 million readers worldwide, alongside the U.S. edition. But before it took its place as the fashion bible, Vogue magazine had to start somewhere. Its story begins in the United States in 1892 under the direction of aristocrat Arthur Baldwin Tenor, who created a weekly gazette aimed at high society. The main content focused on information about books, music, or sports. When it comes to their design, the covers showcased illustrations of New York society with precise details of both men and women's fashion and attire. But what truly makes these covers captivating is their exquisite artistic design and careful composition. The illustrations featured elegant ladies, often dressed in period attire, adorned with elaborate hats, gloves, and embellishments like flowers, jewelry, or even architectural details. The colors used were sophisticated and subtle, such as pastel tones and gold accents. The typography was elegant. Well, that's a trademark of Vogue, but in these early editions, the magazine's name was also ornately adorned. After Tenor's death, the magazine underwent a significant change. It came into the hands of a young advertising expert named Condé Nast. So, as fashion and society evolved, the magazine's aesthetics evolved too. Starting from 1910, the magazine became bimonthly, focusing solely on fashion and undoubtedly targeting women as its audience. The influence of Art Nouveau style was evident in the typography and decorative details. Curves and organic forms remained integral to the design. Illustrators became even more creative, reflected in the refined typography of Vogue, which featured much more ornate designs than before. Over the years, the magazine became one of the most popular and glamorous, thanks in large part to collaborations with renowned painters like Dali, Giorgio de Chirico, and photographers like Man Ray. In fact, it was also in the 1920s when photographs replaced illustrations on the cover. Edward Steichen, one of the most influential figures in the history of photography, who combined his pictorialist style with avant-garde elements, setting the standard for the modern fashion photographer, was hired by Condé Nast as the graphic editor for both Vogue and Vanity Fair. His motto became, turn Vogue into a Louvre. And they succeeded. Over the years, they've turned their images into something more than just fashion. Plus, during the 1940s, the magazine really honed its style, as seen in the typography that's still used today. Bold serif letters in the center with a thick top border. That's the Vogue touch. In the 1950s, Jessica Daves took the helm, and she brought in portrait master Irving Penn. He revolutionized fashion photography with simple yet powerful covers, often in black and white. Later, from the 1960s until 1971, the magazine was all about spectacle, expensive productions, and creativity, with even more focus on fashion and its accessories. All of this was under the guidance of a new editor, Diana Vreeland. It was precisely under her guidance that we got the iconic cover featuring a young girl with long lashes and a doll-like face known as Twiggy in 1967 or the one from 1959 featuring Audrey Hepburn, the actress from Breakfast at Tiffany's, exuding sophistication and natural beauty, perfectly aligned with Vogue's style. During this era, there's something quite distinctive. The covers only showed the models' faces. Perhaps that's why we were mesmerized by Twiggy's gaze, who repeatedly took center stage. Since 1988, the magazine has been under the helm of the popular editor Anna Wintour, 
who changed the photography style, moving from covers featuring only the model's faces to full-body poses in outdoor locations with natural light. And most notably, she introduced styling where high-end designer pieces were mixed with more affordable items, as seen in her first cover, featuring a young model wearing a La Croix t-shirt paired with second-hand jeans. During this time, being different and shaking things up became the norm. For instance, in the August 1989 issue, British model Naomi Campbell made history as the first black model to grace the cover of the French edition of the magazine, a big deal that turned into one of Vogue's most iconic covers. This came after the publisher initially hesitated to feature a model of color, and Yves Saint Laurent even threatened to cut ties with the magazine. Five years down the line, Kate Moss made her debut in the magazine, becoming a 90s icon and one of the most sought-after supermodels. Her angelic face and camera skills brought her heaps of success, along with her natural sensuality and magnetic personality. She became the world's most featured Vogue cover girl, appearing on 30 British Vogue covers, 16 Vogue Paris covers, and five US Vogue covers. It's rare to see a photo of Kate without the Vogue logo stamped above her. That's how deeply ingrained Vogue is in our culture. After all, Vogue covers not only reflect fashion, but also mirror cultural diversity and beauty ideals of each era. From the early covers featuring New York high society women to the recent ones celebrating multicultural beauty, even making history by featuring Harry Styles solo on the cover for the first time. These images have witnessed the evolution of representation and changes in perception of a magazine that has become synonymous with fashion. It's no wonder it's called the Fashion Bible. Its influence is undeniable. Designers, photographers, stylists, and fashion enthusiasts continue to draw inspiration from these iconic images, reinterpreting their styles and adapting them to current trends. These covers are an endless source of inspiration for present and future generations. A testament to this was the cover for the magazine's 125th anniversary. Vogue chose painter John Curran, who designed a cover with a masterful portrait of actress Jennifer Lawrence, using techniques and composition reminiscent of the classical grandmasters to present a cover that harks back to the 1940s. But vintage Vogue covers aren't just pictures. They're real fashion treasures. Collectors and fashion fans go crazy for them because of their historical and cultural significance. Prices can range from $150 to $500 for one in good condition. That's a bit steep compared to the usual cost of around $20 per year. But considering they celebrate the beauty, style, and creativity of each era, they're definitely worth it. So, What's your favorite vintage Vogue cover? Let us know in the comments. And if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more journeys through timeless beauty and art. Thanks for watching and see you next time.